Hello, everybody, and welcome to Taking Control, the ADHD podcast on True Story FM. I'm Pete Wright, and I'm here with Nikki Kinzer. Hello, everyone. Hello, Pete Wright. Hi. Here with me. Hi. Hi. I, uh, the chat room has distracted me now because Brian, Brian, come on. You're the one. He posts, let's get ready to podcast. And now all I can think about is, welcome, let's get ready to ADHD. And I don't, I don't care for that, but I'm such an anchor man. Like I see text and I read it. Yes. Uh, so that's just how I am. How are you? Are you good? I'm doing great. You feeling good? Yes. We're wrapping up May. Still feels like New Year was just a few days ago. I know. Not sure how this is going so fast. Um, we're talking about uh, art therapy today on, on the show. And we have two people who are joining us. Uh, Shoshana Blaze is our uh, is a member of our fantastic member of our community. And she tied us into uh, an artist that she works with for creative care sessions, uh, Andrea Krakowski, who is uh, also a delightful artist and a thoughtful, thoughtful practitioner of using art as a way to better integrate our, our you know, emotional regulation, neurodiversity, all of these yeah. things. And so we're very excited to have them on the show. And and we talk about all of the great arts. Uh, I'm curious, Nikki, what, what do you, do you have an outlet right now? Do you feel like you, you have an artistic outlet? Well, it goes back and forth. Yeah. It, it's puzzles or, or, or watercolor. Um, yeah. I don't, I bet I'm not doing either one right now. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know, you really need to be creating a puzzle. That's, right. You paint right. a watercolor and then make the puzzle. I can see you with a little jigsaw making the, yeah. all the curves. Yeah. You could totally, yeah. you could do that. That's your next thing. But I will tell you, Pete, after uh, talking with Andrea and Shoshana, I am inspired. I'm going yeah. back and I'm going to, I'm going to pull my watercolors out and I'm going to just be in the moment and paint. Yeah, good for you. What good about you? you? Um, you know, I, 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 we talk a little bit about it in the show about my my uh, pottery, and I don't like. I used to spend a lot of time in the, uh, you know, in the studio when I was uh, in high school, and have a bunch of finished work that is that I really am quite proud of. Mm-hmm. And I didn't touch it for years and years uh, until very recently. Uh, uh, I went back into the studio and got some uh, and got some little classes, wheel classes to get you back integrated into the clay. And uh, it's been an extraordinary experience. And we talk a little bit about this, the act of creating, not to finish some perfect thing, but just to create mm-hmm. and throw it away. Just the, the act of moving your hands. Uh, I, I find that an incredibly powerful and grounding exercise. So I'm really excited to talk to these uh, folks to have the, to let you all hear what they have to say, because, you know, whatever your practice is, it it lines up with with the intention, which is to better ground and better align your yourself inside your skin. And uh, I, I think that's a really powerful message. So I'm excited to talk about it. Before we do that, head over to TakeControlADHD.com to get to know us a little bit better. You can listen to the show there on the website or subscribe to the mailing list, and we'll send you an email each time a new episode is released. Connect with us on Facebook, Instagram, or Pinterest at TakeControlADHD. But to really connect with us, head over to our ADHD Discord community. Super easy to just jump right into the general community channel. Just head to TakeControlADHD.com slash Discord. And you will be whisked over to the general invitation and login page. But if you're looking for a little more, particularly if this show has ever touched you or helped you understand your relationship with ADHD in a new way, you can support the show directly through Patreon. That is our listener-supported podcasting landing portal. And uh, with just a few dollars a month, you can help guarantee that we continue to grow this show, have great guests, and continue to invest in features uh, that really uh, are dedicated to the community. Visit patreon.com slash the ADHD podcast to learn more. And you know, when you hear Pete's voice get a little bit giddy, maybe a little choked up, it's because he's about to talk about his favorite invisible productivity tool. It's Text Expander. Text Expander is back, y'all. Truly one of my favorite, favorite tools in my tool chest. It is always there running in the background, just waiting for me to type an abbreviation or a snippet in text expander speak. 
And when it sees that snippet, it goes to work, instantly expanding from just a few characters on my keyboard to words, sentences, paragraphs, entire pages of text, indeed, a manifesto, all erupting from just a few characters. This week, we're talking about art therapy. And while I'm not much of a visual artist, I do love the written word. I've written books for clients and fiction for fun. And here's the trick I use every single time I start a big project. I build a snippet library of all the characters, people, terms, and places that will be used in the project. And I assign quick snippets to each of them. That way, I can be sure I will never misspell a single proper noun in a large project because Text Expander has my back. Constantly adding too many S's to Mississippi? No worries. Text Expander has it have a fantasy character name with lots of weird letter combinations and maybe a silent number two. I'll never remember that. It's okay. Text Expander has my back there too. But it's not just for me. I'm on two teams that both use Text Expander, and I hope you'll explore the team features too. The way Text Expander says it, your team's knowledge is at their fingertips, and that's absolutely true. But you know what else? If I write something and I put it in Text Expander for my team, Frankly, now I know that no one else will screw it up trying to recreate it, cobbling it together from old emails and such. It's just it's easier for everyone. You can get your whole team on the same page by getting information out of silos and into the hands of everyone who needs to use it. Share your team's knowledge across departments so your team is sending a unified message to your customers and isn't spending time reinventing the wheel. Text Expander is available on Mac, Windows, Chrome, iPhone, iPad. And for listeners of the ADHD podcast, you can get 20% off your first year of service. Just visit TakeControlADHD.com slash Text Expander, and you will be taken right over to our page on their site where you can get started. And if you get started right now, you will save 20% off. Don't forget, that's an important number your entire first year. Make work work the way your brain works by saying more in less time and with less effort using Text Expander. Our great thanks to the Text Expander team for sponsoring the ADHD podcast. All right, Nikki, let's get started. Art therapy. Andrea, Shoshana, let us begin. I am so glad that you both are here today. We have Andrea Krakowski, who is a uh, teaching art therapist uh, and here to talk about art therapy and ADHD. And Shoshana Blaze Like Fire is here with us, too, who is a, a not only a fantastic member of our own ADHD community, but also a, uh, I will say generously, a grateful recipient of the work of art therapy with Andrea. Thank you both for joining us here on the show. My pleasure. Absolutely. Thank you for having Nikki, me. Thank you. you. Gotta, Nikki, you got to set us up. This is this, the, the, how this conversation came to be is a little bit roundabout. And I'm, I'm very excited to hear the provenance of our art therapy conversation. Yes. So Shoshana and I were talking and she mentioned that she was going to her art therapy um, appointment in the afternoon. And I'm like, art therapy? What's that? <laughs> I want to know more about what you do. And so she explained a little bit of what she does and and how it's helped her a little bit. And of course, the podcaster in me was like, oh, that would be a really good show because it isn't something that you hear a lot about. You know, you hear about coaching and you hear about like traditional therapy and, uh, you know, everything else, medication and everything else to, to help manage ADHD. Um, but you don't necessarily hear a lot about what she's doing. And so that's why I asked her, I said, Hey, do you think you, would you want to be on the show? And do you think that you're, um, and I want to be very clear, Andrea, is it, are, do you consider yourself a therapist? That's a great question. So the word therapy, um, I think has a lot of connotations for people. It's not, the reason that I kind of steer away from it is because I think when people think of therapists, they think of something specific. Mm -hmm. And I really do like to set people up with a framework that sets them up for success and give them a little bit more of an expectation 
which has been challenging because this is a practice that I've kind of been, as I say, working towards my whole life. So I have done a lot of caretaking and a lot of care work, and that's really led me to where I am today, as well as my lifelong kind of identity as an artist. So this practice is, I think, unlike other things that currently exist and also very similar in some Mm -hmm. ways. Um, For instance, it is a confidential space in which I'm offering emotional support to people one-on-one. But unlike other therapists, like the information that I've gathered and the ways in which that I'm bringing forth activities and tools are from my own experience, both in and outside of classrooms, working with children, and now working with adults one on one. But well, not I, as a licensed, like a licensed practicing. Therapist. I am not a licensed. And that's that I think no. is, in, is it, you know, in, in the space of words matter, there is a um, I, mm-hmm. art therapy, the way I've understood it, it is something specific. It's just it unlocks kind of a different part of you. I, and I'm I'm bullish for art therapy. I think it's fantastic. Um, but it but to me and stop me when I start lying, it is about unlocking parts of yourself through the predominantly the art, not the not so much like talk therapy. Right. That's not what we're what we're doing here. So I would say um, there's a lot of cross sections in that I hold a lot of space for what folks are going through emotionally. And I want to create a container that allows people to work through those emotions and have, as I say, a soft Mm -hmm. landing Mm -hmm. spot Mm -hmm. for them. So there are people who come in and they have something very heavy that they want to work through or talk through. And what I usually do is I sit down with folks and Shoshana will be the first to tell you, Shoshana, what's the first thing that we do? We look at the feelings wheel. There's yes. a feelings exactly. wheel. Uh, yeah. Have you never seen it? I don't know. I've never seen the feelings wheel. The feelings wheel is used by a lot of different practitioners. Um, and it's quite literally exactly as it sounds. It is a chart that depicts some people will be like, can I use a word that's not on the there feelings wheel? There are so wheel? many yes. feelings so, on um, the feelings wheel. There's so many feelings. And I believe that giving words to what we're feeling is one of the most crucial ways we can help process them. And so being able to give language to that is one of the first steps. Wow. It is so interesting. So on your website, you you call it creative care sessions, right? Mm-hmm. So... What is it that you do in these sessions? We know that the first thing is you're you're looking at the feelings wheel and then what happens? Mm-hmm. That usually leads us into conversation. It doesn't for everybody, right? Like we all have different needs. We all have different sensory needs. We all have different capacities for conversation. And so for some folks, it will look like being in conversation for perhaps 15, 20 minutes. My sessions are 50 minutes long. So we may be in conversation from that conversation I'm going to find something, a question that comes to mind that helps us dig into what need can we address, right? So like when we're feeling all kinds of different emotions and our feelings are usually layered, um, we don't just feel one thing at once um, and recognizing that our feelings are morally neutral. So being angry is as morally neutral as being thrilled, um, allowing space for that feeling to occur, and then investigating where, what need is this pointing to? How might I be able to address that? How, how might I be able to give some attention to the part of me that's asking for that, whatever that thing may be? So I'll usually give people a 10-minute um, section of time. I'll keep the time. I give them a two-minute notice, and they will use whatever materials that are calling to them Sometimes I may say this really lends itself to writing or this may lend itself more to illustration, but whatever comes out on the paper is wonderful. I call these prompts because they are exactly that. I am, my goal is to prompt you. If that means that you are led tangentially into a different direction, that's okay. And one thing that I think is important with neurodiversity and ADHD is that there's not punishment for not answering something a specific way. I'm not looking for a specific answer. And it's important that that remain true when I'm receiving that information. So if I give somebody a prompt and it leads them down a different road, let's, without punishment, look at where that road went. Mm -hmm. I am, um, I'm stuck in dismayed and detestable on the feelings wheel. Oh, no. (laughs) 
I don't know what to do about that. Do you find that I, I mean, when you when you talk about materials, do you find that there that mm-hmm. that materials um, align in any way loosely with uh, with different issues? Like so, you know, if I, let's say I'm dismayed and detestable, am I more likely to be able to unlock something by, you know, throwing some clay down on a wheel or, you know, starting to collage work or, you know, I would say that's really personal. Um, and there are ways that you can get out. So I do really like somatic yeah. experiencing. So in the body, um, I do love clay for that reason. Um, that you mentioned is you really get to yeah. throw it down and that can be wonderful. Um, I will sometimes have people, um, tear up a sheet of paper or scribble scrabble, or I will have us shake our hands. And so there are tools exercises and materials that I think lend themselves to allowing emotions to process through the body. Do I think that there is a specific like watercolors are good for anger and colored <laughs> right, pencils are good right. for sadness? No. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> to defeat the purpose of what you were just saying that there yeah. is no right or wrong way of doing it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, so Shoshana, I see you shaking your head a, a lot when she's talking. So I'm curious, like, are there certain forms of this that have helped help? Like how, how has it helped you? Um, I think for me, the thing that has helped the most is being able to have like this variety of materials. And sometimes I do ask her, I'm like, what, what do you think I should use for this? Because (laughs) I don't have any idea where to go. And I have collected a lot of materials as we all tend to do. Um, you know, but I personally find like when I'm having one of my super frustrated days and I really want to like get something, you know, kinesthetically, I guess is that the right word Mm -hmm. out that I, I actually go towards my oil crayons because I can color with them. There's like a feeling to the to the actual coloring, but then I can literally get my hands in there and mess with them. And move them around and blend them together and, you know, fing- almost finger paint mm-hmm. like right, a kid. Yeah. And that, so that tends to be where I go with those. When I'm having like more sadness, I go to watercolor because mm-hmm. it feels very like tears. So there's a lot, there's a lot of that kind of stuff. And sometimes I, I'm really happy and then I occasionally go for markers, but I've learned what materials I personally like and what sort of feels more like an extension of my body versus like, I really don't like colored pencils. Mm -hmm. Like I thought I would. Mm -hmm. My husband loves them. Mm -hmm. My husband also does art therapy with her. Mm -hmm. Um, So he loves his colored pencils and I love my watercolors and my paintbrushes. And, um, you know, I don't know. That's, that's sort of the big thing for me. Do any of your children do it too? It used to. Okay. That's actually how we met her. Um, it was suggested she was mostly working with kids, I think, at the time. And so two or three yeah. of my kids were doing sessions and they were helpful. And we were like, hey, do you do adults? Like, I'm kind of jealous. Um, and that was how we got started with it. So it's been a, a while now. I don't even remember how many years, two years, something like it's that. It's been maybe two years yeah, since we started. And, um, it is probably, I mean, I do all kinds of different therapy and stuff. Mm-hmm. And this is the one that I talk about in my other therapies mm-hmm. where I'm like, I had this breakthrough this week. Like we did this activity and I got to show it to you. And like, um, kind of like I was telling you on Monday mm-hmm. about the one we did last week. And you're like, don't tell me anymore. Um, But, you know, when I have those moments, like I have a lot of aha moments working with Andrea a lot more than I've had in like decades of therapy because I'm going to that subconscious place that I get out of my thinking brain and into like, you know, I don't know, she'll give me a prompt. And most of the time I will get an idea in my head instantly and be able to just go straight to it. And the times where it's not those blocks that we have, like the, um, something always comes and I have it all in a notebook and I can now look back and review and I write down the prompt at the bottom of the page with the date. And so I know exactly what we were doing that time. 
it's really helpful. Uh, have you found any sort of trends in, you know, I, I, I feels like you're going to hear this and I'm, it's going to sound like I'm really hammering home trying to align emotions to uh, specific no, art. Did. But I'm really curious, like the idea, like when you're feeling you know, pressured, rushed, distracted, like mm-hmm. the ADHD side of you. Do you have a go-to that that connects to your brain that you find allows you to settle? Yeah, I think when I'm feeling that kind of like baseline anxiety and that not grounded kind of, yeah. I just need to get back in my body. I tend to go with the oil cramps okay. or the things yeah. that are much more textural. Um, and I actually had a six week period about a month or so ago where I did writing Okay. every week. It was mm-hmm. something with words. It was all black and white. And after like- You were writing a lot of poetry. I was. It was really cool. I had like poetry. I was like, I don't have an image, but I just have things I need to get out. Or I was right. really into lettering for a little bit um, and doing like perspective stuff. And when I like looked back at it, cause I didn't realize I had done this for like weeks in a row, I found that there was like the right and left sides of my brain were competing at that time. And there was like these conversations in my head that needed to get yeah. out. Um, and so it was one of those reflective things that after a couple of weeks, I was like, Oh, well, that's interesting. And could kind of look back at it and make even more sense out of what was happening. You So we're recording this on video for those who are listening. And so we happen to have the benefit of being able to see where everybody is. And so Shoshana, the stuff behind you, it, are those like, is that stuff you've done? Or are you are uh, those your like sketches or? This one, Andrea, it was one of the very first ones we did. Okay. Um, yeah, that was one of the first ones we did. This other thing was when was a COVID art project with my children. Well, um, <laughs> well, I'm, I'm actually, but I actually okay. have a ton of them okay. right here. Look at that. Yeah, they're all hanging. Oh, it's so cool to see it them. Really I have a bunch cool. there and my book is over there. But um, yeah, I mean, I could like, these were some of the ones that we did when um, she was teaching me how to do like more realistic stuff. Because sometimes I ask for a lesson. Um, and we did like a mandala. So this mm-hmm. one was really fun. Her, she said, go around the room and find like three different size circles. And we traced them. And then you focus on like the activity of like coloring mm-hmm. them in. So I challenged myself and I colored it in with watercolor. Mm-hmm. Um, but like, this is a oil crayon one. I don't know that that, what the, that prompt was, but there's others where it was more focusing on the process of like making, you know, a certain type of pattern and then, you know, really kind of going to the, I don't know, less, less out of the, out of the thinking brain and more into the subconscious yeah. and seeing what happens. I, um, I'm interested in both of your thoughts on this. And it's something that I have struggled with all my life, which is the idea of creating mm-hmm. a work for the act of creating the work and not for the finished product. Yeah, that's one of the biggest things that um, people struggle with both. So I work with folks who are artists and identify as artists in that they are like, I have this skill and I show my work at these different events and this is a part of my life. And they particularly struggle with that. And I like to emphasize it even more. And I really, it's okay for us to have, to create art that doesn't match our aesthetics. It's kind of my way of saying you can make ugly art, Mm -hmm. right? Like I make art that I do not enjoy. It is simply for the sake of it. Um, And it is challenging. It challenges the part of us that feels a desire to be perfect, Mm -hmm. um, that pursues perfectionism as ever, as it it could be a possibility. Um, And it, challenges that part of our brains that's telling us that we're only worth what we can produce. I think one of the things that's been really big for me is learning how to let something be unfinished. And mm. that's a really big thing. Oh, um, God, you're I'm right? like, my anxiety is yeah, peaking just exactly. hearing those words. <laughs> so, I mean, I can show you one right here. So I don't even think I put the date on it, but like yeah. I, I said I was going to finish it. And I never did. And I have 
several of those because we only get 10 minutes. Yeah. Mind right. You, right. Right. She really. T- she's strict on the time. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, um, and sometimes I'm like, oh, I got to get it finished. But one of the things that I think has been sort of a subtle lesson that I didn't really think of until this week is learning to let it go mm-hmm. and learning yeah. to be okay with how it turned like this is this is what I was able to do and that is okay and it's that's hard mm-hmm. that's a really hard one for especially for the perfectionist oh for us, sure right? yeah and we're all like I gotta do it right and if it's not perfect and you know but it's that all or nothing yeah, mentality, exactly. right? That black and white thinking that either it's going to be perfect or I'm not going to do right. it at all. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think that's been one of the greatest lessons. And I mean, I tell Andre all the time, I'm like, so you were in my head the other day <laughs> and telling me like to that, you know, I deserve to do this and I deserve to take that extra time or if we have a day where I'm extra upset and I spend more of the time talking and don't really get to whatever the art was, she'll remind me like, stay in your space 10 more minutes Mm -hmm. and do something for yourself. And there are times that I have done that and I have gone into the whole situation like feeling anxious, completely ungrounded, like I can't make a decision left or right. And I can feel like a physical difference at the end of it yeah. where my hand was shaking from the anxiety and now I can draw a straight line. Yeah. So, so I'm, it's big. I'm curious. Cause you mentioned a few times prompts. What, what's a prompt? So a prompt is a question. Okay. Um, and it's a question. Sometimes I write my prompts or my prompts are just coming abstractly from here's a question that I think could be helpful to us. Like for example, one of the props I, prompts I've been working with is, um, what ideas, people, or thoughts am I putting on a pedestal? Mm-hmm. Um, perhaps without realizing it. And so that's something that I think can be helpful for any number of people. I often take my prompts from where that person is at. So sometimes people will sit down and they're like, everything's okay. Mm-hmm. You know, and sometimes people sit down and they're just like, here's everything that's going on, and I'm so stressed out and I'm so anxious. And after listening to them, I'm able to pull out a question that I think could lead us to a helpful place. My goal is not is this to find out if something's the right or wrong thing to do, but to lean into, could this be more helpful or less helpful? Is it more helpful when I do this or is it perhaps less Mm -hmm. helpful? And looking at things as less, especially with ADHD, especially with neurodiversity, especially with like task initiation um, and moving through the world and figuring out how to structure our days, um, looking at the things that are truly morally neutral and recognizing that the shame is not actually a helpful motivator for us. Shame may light a fire under our butts for a couple minutes, but it doesn't keep it there. And so finding out ways that we can navigate with compassion. So the more time we, I spend a lot of time asking people, why does it make sense? Why does, so I'll I'll give you an example. Um, I'm a messy person. I have always been super messy. Um, I've really struggled to keep things organized. And when I ask myself, oh, why am I like this? Why can't I just clean my room? Why can't I just pick up a dish and put it right in the dishwasher like I should? That's a question from shame. If I say, why is it challenging for me to pick up an item and put it away? I may come to the conclusion of, well, it doesn't have a place to go and I have so many other things like it and I also am really stressed out and it makes sense that this would be challenging. When I give myself understanding, I give myself compassion. With that compassion comes room to navigate what might be helpful here. That's uh, that's the the ADHD brain answering, you know, the need to know why. And I think we we stop. uh, It's easy to get stuck in the distraction, frustration, overwhelm, and and forget that we need to ask why. Yes, I I think that's a that's a really valuable lesson. And and you know getting back to this idea of unfinished work, like I, I, it took me a long time to start embracing this question. And I ended up going to a pottery 
class. Uh, I, I haven't done pottery yeah. in, you know, I, I lived in the in the studio when I was in high school. That was my thing. And I haven't done it in mm-hmm. decades. Went back to this class and the class was only throwing like there is nothing yeah. after that it, because, you know, it, it's like a different class. You have to sign up for weeks long class. This was only wheel time, which means yeah, everything you create, you throw away. Everything you create in five minutes, it goes back into the pile uh, to be reused. And it it had yeah. not occurred to me until then that there was this act of creation not to finish fire, uh, glaze fire, that kind of a thing, that there, the act mm-hmm. of just moving my hands was enough to, to, to ask the question, why am I doing this? I'm doing this because I'm developing a new connection with my brain. It's, it's kind of the same thing. Like, mm-hmm. why can't I put this dish away? It's, it's a, it is similar to, um, to how we dance yeah. or how we might do yeah. yoga. You know, we don't have a completed project at the end, but we do have a transformation. Yeah, right. Yeah. Why do we right. do yoga? Well, it's a side hustle. Obviously, it's for my YouTube channel. Smash that like button. <laughs> Um, Mm -hmm. (laughs) yeah, no, I I totally, uh, totally get that, that, that uh, whole idea. Do you do, uh, or do you have any sense of, uh, uh, you know, what, what is the breadth of media that you, that you tackle? And, And I'm asking this as a nerd, uh, first and foremost, because I had what I like to call a transformative experience in VR. And I'm curious if you've ever, if you've ever thought about that sort of work in art. I have not thought about VR. I'm not super familiar with it, to be frank with you. Um, I like to go for whatever is accessible to people. Yeah. So I will tell people a pencil and paper is wonderful. And if you have other materials you enjoy working with, that's yeah. great too. Most people will eventually like to get colored pencils or usually already have some. Um, but I don't want people to ever feel like they have to go out and buy a bunch of things in order yeah, to do this. Right. You don't. You may find that you enjoy watercolors or as we do this, you're like, huh, I would like to invest in a in a set of mm-hmm. markers. I, yeah. But so do it's you not do necessary. this over Zoom then? I okay. do. Um, I am looking to initially I wasn't, but then the pandemic. Right. right. Um, I am looking to um move that to in-person and I'm figuring out some ways to make that possible mm-hmm. right now. But I have found that it, it, it offers a lot of accessibility to people, um, especially to my clients who live an hour away from me and have kids and have uh, jobs where they need to be, you know, kind of on call or they need to be um, within like 20 minutes of their yeah. work or whatever it may be. This allows people to, you know, be in a separate room while their kids are doing something mm-hmm. else. It gives a level of accessibility that I'm really thankful yeah. for. I'm curious what you think is the difference between when you work with um, children mm-hmm. and when you work with adults. That's a good question. I have really transitioned to working. So I worked with kids for a really long time. I was a Hebrew school teacher. Um, I did a lot of similar things to what I'm doing now. Um, a lot of social emotional learning. Um, a lot of art projects. Mm -hmm. And that's where this started was I noticed this need for play, this need for experience isn't ending with childhood. And we don't often, so we talk about the unfinished project. That is play. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The unfinished project is play. And when we're kids, we don't have capitalism beating down our throats in the same way saying you need to produce something you need to make something you need to be productive and we often feel a lot of guilt and shame especially um as neurodivergent people about the amount that we get done it becomes all about how productive we can be and optimizing that and it's why i really encourage us to play i think it's one of the most beautiful ways we can spend our time and to answer your questions there are a lot of differences Mm -hmm. But I like to bring, I will often do really similar activities with kids and adults, depending on the biggest question that I ask myself when designing activities for adults or kids is one, it's very specific to the person, which is how much room for imagination is helpful to them. So some folks really don't do well with, it can be anything, make it anything you want, get creative. They feel stuck. 
And so a much more narrow, here is the room and the container we've created for this. You can use colored pencils, markers, or watercolors. What do you think? So going through it step-by-step and smaller is going to be helpful. And I do this with kids and adults. With kids, there is a lot less focus on um, on talking mm-hmm. because they don't know what to say probably, children, right? Like, No, and it's not... It's not the way they move through the yeah, world. Yeah. Um, and so it one, it is, I start off children, adults, teens, all the same way, though I am exclusively working with adults now. Um, but um, when I work with, when I did work with kids and teens, I also like to start them off with the feelings wheel. It's really important to me that we acknowledge that not every day is a happy day. And we talk about how, how much of a struggle to question how are you is, right? Because it's, it's more like, hello, right? It's, I'm good. How are you? I'm good. How are you? And so I not to ask people, how are you? I will often say, how has your day been so far? Or how are you feeling today? Or where would you like to start today? Because how are you doesn't really lead us anywhere productive. And so With kids, we will talk about, I will kind of let them steer the ship. So some kids would really enjoy like, can I show you this? Can I show you this? Can I show Mm -hmm. you this? And I often wanted to provide that space for them. And I would say, we have five minutes. I would love to see you perform this song, right? Um, Or I would love to see your new toy. And because I want to give them a space in which they are appreciated and where their expertise matters, Mm -hmm. right? They are an expert in so many things and they just don't get the opportunities to show it. So having that space is really important to me to show them. It's really lovely. Um, So Shoshana, how, what is your, when you look at your sort of arc with art therapy, is there ever a a point where you feel like you, you have a practice on your own or is this a a relationship that's the most important piece uh, for you? I think it's a little bit of both. I find that I have, what I have learned is to, um, that I deserve the time to practice on my own. Yeah. And so like I, um, I have learned what things in my life are actually me doing these things. Like when we're talking about unfinished projects, right? Um, I used to think, oh, I can't, buy new stuff for a new creative hobby because I have all these unfinished ones when actually what I discovered through all of this is I go through like a cycle. So I will be really into crocheting. I'll be really into cooking, then rock painting, then coloring, then writing. And it'll sort of just spiral around for a few weeks or months at a time. And so it has made me feel so much better about that because I don't like my crochet. I haven't touched it in months, but when I do, I can just pick it right back up and keep working on whatever project I was doing. So I feel like it's giving, it's given me, like I said, she's in my head all the time, Yeah, but it's given me, it's given me that space and like that, um, I don't know, compassion for myself to give myself permission that I need to do these things and take that time for myself. So I have like a whole art section in my basement office, but I still like my Friday one hour session is it's an anchor in my week, you know, and it's the end of like the school week. It's not the end of my work week, but it's the end of like the week for my kids or whatever has been going on. And very often it's a, I need to decompress about all of the things that have happened this week. And I'm so glad that it's opposite of when my talk therapy is, which is on Mondays, Mm -hmm. right? And so it's spaced out in a way that like it can meet that need. And then I can go into the weekend a much lighter person and be much more present for my family, Mm -hmm. which is what I want. So valuable. So if somebody that's listening wants to, wants to try this, um, obviously we'll give you or we'll make sure that they know how to get a hold of you, Andrea. <laughs> um, but how would they also, I mean, you're one person, so you can't take on everybody. Mm-hmm. How can, how can sure. somebody find 
this type of work with someone else? Would they, where, where, where would they start? That's a really good question. Um, I do think that there are art therapists out there. And I also recognize like a lot of my clients use the phrase art therapy because I'm still kind of looking for the language. Mm -hmm. I've landed on creative yeah. healing facilitator, but I think it's a lot easier for folks to say art therapy. I do think that art therapy does offer a lot mm -hmm. of this. And even though I'm not a licensed art therapist, I do think there are licensed art therapists out there right. that would absolutely bring similar things to the mm -hmm. table. So how did you find out about Andrea Shoshana? Like how did, I know you said through your kids, but like, how did you find out that she did this work? My talk therapist actually, actually referred, okay. referred us over. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So that actually might be something too, that somebody could ask, do you yeah. know anyone that does something like this? Mm -hmm. um, Absolutely. And see if there's anyone available. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Mm -hmm. There's something so powerful about working with someone who is an artist because, and that's, that's kind of what I'm hearing in your relationship. Like it's both that uh, the act of, of finding that sort of kinesthetic release is one thing. And the other is actually developing new skills that uh, you're learning in this relationship to become more confident in your ability to express that emotional a part of yourself. Is that, is that a fair assessment, Shoshana? Absolutely. Yeah. There, I mean, a lot of these things on my wall were like techniques that she taught yeah. me how to do. Like today we're going to learn how to draw a flower. We did like a autumn tree one time where we talked about blending colors and those things are then, those are weeks when I'm like, yeah, I don't really have anything to talk about. <laughs> and which is not often. Right. Um, and so I take, I take all of that and bring it into these other projects that we do because I'm like, yes, that's what I see in my head, but I didn't really know how to do it. Yeah. And so it takes some mm -hmm. of that frustration out because I now have a little bit of a skill and, you know, or I have the permission or the suggestion of, well, what happens if you do this? And then I'm like, oh, I didn't know I could do that. So cool. I didn't know that was a thing. Yeah, right. I didn't know that was a thing. This mm -hmm. is, I mean, the whole conversation to me is is a celebration of the unknown unknown. I don't know how that I don't know that I don't know how to do any of this stuff. I don't know that I didn't know any of this stuff existed before I actually tried this technique or or mm -hmm. you know, put this particular type of crayon to paper, that kind of a thing. It's, my it's husband lovely. especially feels like that. Like my husband is a he plays guitar and piano and stuff. So he is a musician. Mm -hmm. He's a speech therapist too, right? And so language and music is the only art that he ever thought he could do. And watching just the transfer, like I'm not, I don't know what happens in their sessions, but watching the transformation on the outside of him coming to me, just like my kids are being, look what I made today. Yeah. I can't believe I could do this. I didn't know I could do this. And I was like, well, you're great in the arts. Like, of of course you have it in you. And like Andre always says, we're all artists mm -hmm. in our own way. And so, um, yeah, I think it's been it's been really fun to watch from the outside yeah. too of somebody else experiencing it. Well, mm. That's just lovely. Thank you guys so much for being here and talking about this. Absolutely, thanks for having us. It's it's an honor. Uh, Shoshana Blaze, uh, grateful recipient of art therapy and practitioner extraordinaire and Andrea Krakowski uh, both here with us today. Thank you guys so much for your participation. Links in the show notes. Andrea, I make sure I have this right. Andrea Krakowski.com is, is the best place for you. Yes. And stellar pronunciation of my last name. I might add. Nicely I, done. <laughs> I doff my hat to you. Thank you. Uh, oh, this is this has been really fun. And thank you, everybody, for downloading and listening to this show. We sure appreciate your time and your attention. Don't forget, if you have something to contribute to the show, please head over to the Show Talk channel in our Discord server, and you can join us right there by becoming a supporting member at the deluxe level or better. And thank you to the Text Expander team for once again so, so graciously sponsoring this show. We appreciate all of you, too. On behalf of Andrea Krakowski and Shoshana Blaze and Nikki Kinzer, I'm Pete Wright. We'll catch you next time right here on Taking Control, the ADHD podcast. Mm -hmm.